Give it up for Mad Jimmy McLeish. Good evening, Sandy. How are you all doing? That was a bit quiet. How are you all doing, John? Oh, I like it. My name's Jimmy, and I am a Glaswegian. Hello, Jimmy. Just in case you hadn't guessed. Anybody here been to Glasgow? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Then you'll understand why I live in Brisbane now, right? <laughs> but, I did, I grew up on those tough green streets with my brother, my sister, my father and my mother. Now she's the salt of the earth, my mother, with a heart of pure granite and a face to match. <laughs> she ruled her household with an iron fist. Her idea of showing affection was to sing us a wee lullaby as she beat us to sleep on a night. <laughs> but she was a resourceful woman too. Whenever she went shopping, she was always on the lookout for the two-for-one deal. You know the ones, one in the shopping trolley, the other one in a handbag. <laughs> I saw a security guard try to stop her once. Poor bastard. <laughs> Still, a few days in hospital and a dozen or so stitches, and he was back on his feet. But he was a broken man. And he never worked the front line at Woolworths again. <laughs> now, I wouldn't say my mother was an attractive woman, nor a small one. The last time she went out swimming, they thought they'd found the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> My God, she's got some teeth. She can eat a haggis through a tennis racket, that woman. <laughs> Imagine, if you will, a stroppy hippopotamus with a beehive. Then you got my mother just about down. <laughs> now, she and my father had a turbulent relationship, to say the least. She left him on several occasions. The last time for a five-year stretch for armed robbery with violence. <laughs> oh, they dropped the other charge of aggravated assault against the two busies that were sent to arrest her. <laughs> Hell, she lived with my father and raised three kids. She was never going to have any trouble with a couple of wet behind the ears policemen. They even tried using a taser on that. Silly swords. All that did was piss her off. <laughs> Eventually, though, they called in the tactical response unit and they finally managed to subdue her with a water cannon and a cattle prod. <laughs> Even then, it took them an hour to get her in the back of the paddy wagon and another hour to prize the bottle of whiskey out of her fingers. <laughs> And she was wearing handcuffs at the time. <laughs> like I say. She's the heart, she's my heart, my mother. This time though, my father had had enough. And he filed for divorce on the grounds of irreconcilable differences. He complained to the judge that she had a history of violent criminal behaviour and drunkenness. Well, the judge granted a divorce all right. But he couldn't help but point out that the only difference between them seemed to be that she was in prison and he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> now, my wee brother was deeply affected by the divorce. And he couldn't get out of Glasgow quick enough. So he joined the army as soon as he was on probation out of duty. He's in Afghanistan now, fighting the Taliban and anybody else who looks a bit sideways at him. Me and my brother, we were in a shoplifting gang when we was waged. Hell, every kid was. Shoplifting's like a national pastime in Glasgow. It pays better than any Saturday job I know of. And in some households, it's the only regular income to get. Many's the time I legged it from a shop with my kicks so stuffed with contraband 
that the clutch was damn nearly dragging on the hill. <laughs> but I very quickly learned that the trick to shoplifting is no being faster than the busies that are chasing you. You've just got to be faster than the slowest kid in your gang. <laughs> That's why every shoplifting gang has room for a spotty wee fat kid in glasses who can't run. <laughs> Unfortunately, in our gang, that was my wee brother. <laughs> it's no wonder he's grown up being a little difficult to deal with at times. <laughs> now, as to my father, well, he's your archetypal Glaswegian. Short, mostly dunk, barely legible, and we a tendency to violence. But he's not in the same class as my mother. Even he would cower in the face of her wrath. The last time I saw my father, he was living in a run-down council flat on the top floor of a run-down tower block in a run-down suburb of Glasgow. The lifts were perpetually broken and the stairwell stank of piss. And that was its good point. <laughs> but his place was such a mess that I couldn't bring myself to stay there. I'm a man of very high standards, as you can quite plainly see. So I went to stay with my sister. She's very accommodating, my sister. She's got six kids by six different fathers, and you can't get any more accommodating than that. <laughs> Even her nearest and dearest friends reckon they'll have to bury her on her back in a Y-shaped coffin. <laughs> but she's a lovely lass, and the spitting image of her mother. Thank God her kids get their looks from their respective fathers, eh? Now, they say that sons always turn into their father. So my future's completely screwed. But then, so is his. Because my grandfather is a shocking pisshead who will find any excuse to sneak away at the pub whenever he gets the chance. Which means whenever my grandmother is near watching him. Now, the other day, my grandmother got a phone call from her best friend, Bridie. Now my grandfather, he can spot a long phone call coming from a mile away. So he took his opportunity and bolted for the pub, where he proceeded to squander all the proceeds from his Meals on Wheels racket, getting himself drunk on cheap whiskey. He got so drunk, in fact, that come closing time, when he went to get up, he fell flat on his face at the bar. He tried several times unsuccessfully to get to his feet. Till eventually, the barman took pity on him and threw him out on the street to get a bit of fresh air and sober up some. As my grandfather lay in the gutter, looking up at the beautiful orange glow of the Glasgow night sky, he sucked in a couple of deep, recuperative breaths and went to get to his feet, but collapsed in a heap on the pavement. Now, being a resourceful man and a practical drunk, he decided he had one option left, and it wasn't catching a cab. He is a Scotsman after all. He was never going to front for that. So he decided he had to crawl home. 400 metres, and several hours later, <laughs> he got to his front door. Using the doorway for support, he hauled himself upright just long enough to get the front door open before pitching forward into the hallway on his face. As he was laying there measuring his length on the carpet, he could hear my grandmother 
He's still blathering away to Bridie on the phone. And he decided that discretion was the better part of valour. So he crawled straight to the bedroom and headed for the bed. He made one last valiant effort to get to his feet, but merely flopped on the bed and fell sound asleep as soon as his head hit the pillow. He was awoken the next morning by his grandmother, by my grandmother, shaking him heavily and bellowing in his ear. So, you were away out drinking last night, were you? You are the lamp canal and stopped. What makes you think that, my sweetheart? He asked, all innocent life. Oh, because, sweetheart, she replied, the landlord just rang. You left your fucking wheelchair up the pub again. <laughs> <laughs>